Welcome back to another new edition of Windows and Current Affairs. And today, um, Windows and Current Affairs, one of the most important uh, topics, one of the most thorniest, the thorniest also. Of course, uh, today we're going to be uh, uh, embarking over the educational file and higher education in particular. Of course, we all know that education is an important file and a priority to every country. Health and education, they are part and parcel. When we talk about education, we, we talk about a foundation for a coming generation, a foundation for sustainable development, for a renaissance for any century. So um, uh, in order to invest uh, in our uh, kids and our siblings and our uh, new generation, we have to improve the education and upgrade it year after year. Um, today we're going to be looking over the most important challenges that face the educational file in Egypt. We're going also to look over uh, the most important means taken to be able to upgrade the educational file, uh, what have been upgraded, or what have been introduced uh, to or taken uh, in the uh, higher educational file also. We're going to talk about so many uh, files and there is nobody better than Professor Mahmoud Azmi. He's right with us here uh, live in the studio. He's an international higher education consultant and he's also a president of the Egyptian American Federation. Good evening, Good evening. Uh, Dr. Azmi. Uh, I'm very honored to be sitting here today and talking to you. You are one of the most prominent visitors and um, um, people, uh, specialists and uh, uh, scientists who were invited to Masrit Statia Conference or Egypt Can uh, when it comes to the educational file. They invited you in the sense of investing in education. If you would like to start off by talking about how could countries invest in education? First of all, thank you so much for the beautiful uh, compliments. Uh, education is one of the most important uh, method mm -hmm. in investment. Because you invest in human being, you invest in citizen, and you already promote and you build nations. When you get a good citizen, they develop the great nations, Great nation always attract investors. And if even we talk about cash money, you know, coming to people from, in, from education, there are a lot of ways. For example, if we take online, which a project I'm, sub, I'm, I'm presenting to Egypt, uh, if we start an online program in Egypt, actually they did try to do something which you call uh, open university. Mm. And unfortunately because they tried to do it parallel to the online but missing all the details which can make it success, then it didn't work and they closed the program in 2000, uh, 2016. Uh, I brought this project we have 14 million uh, citizen, Egyptian citizen living abroad. 65 14 million? 14 million. 65% mm. living in the Gulf area. Those 65% will make 9.1 million. If we take 5% out of the 9.1 million and offer education to them, by the way, I'm not bringing this Figures just uh, created. No, it is facts. They are going for other programs. They cannot study in the Gulf. They go for online programs offered by foreign universities. Mm -hmm. If we take the 5%, we'll make it 455,000 students. Mm. Normal, uh, any university, the least expensive university in Egypt, the Egyptian ones, not even a foreign ones, it costs about $10,000 a year. If we charge the students $500, it means one over 20 of this price, of this situation, it will be a return for the Egyptian uh, higher education uh, authority after the fourth year or in the fourth year after it developed, you know, the number of people there it will return $950 million. And 
Forget about the, mm. forget about the amount yes, of right. money coming to the country, mm. but look at number of people getting an excellent quality of education. By the way, it has been proven that uh, online education is a better quality than traditional because students goes by itself and scratch the wall to get the information and study it. Uh, however, in the other side, you know, when you go for traditional, uh, unfortunately, in underdeveloped countries, they deal with the students by uh, spoon feeding. Spoon feeding, exactly, which of course it will never work this way. And let me give you an example of uh, investment in education. America invests in education. A dollar in investment in America return seventeen dollars. Mm. In the Asian market, it returned fourteen dollars. In the Middle East, a dollar return thirty-five cents. Why? Because Why? of the quality of education. Mm. You see, once you have a quality of education, you give good education to your citizen. Citizen will develop better quality country, which will return the money. But if you don't have a good education, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, you know. I'm not saying we don't have a, a, a bad education, we have a good education, but our education, if we are in this level, but the world in this level, then we are trying to lift them up, up to here. Mm. You know, we have a good uh, education, and I'm really grateful to the Egyptian government, especially Her Excellency um, Ms. Minister Ambassador Nabila Makram for developing uh, uh, Egypt can because this is the way attracted those Egyptians who would like to pay back their dues to the country. We whatever we owe, we have to do it for this country. And I brought actually two projects to uh, improve or help in developing the education because in 2017, our great president Sisi uh, decided to uh, launch uh, a promotion of uh, bringing our educational level to the highest standard in the world, which mm. is very good. And he also is aiming to get the education to every student, to every Egyptian, regardless where he is. Therefore, I studied these two projects and I did build something, uh, and I found that Egypt can is the good way to go through to, uh, to the government and present this project. We in Egypt, we actually very famous with quality education. However, it went down and gradually going down uh, the past 30 years or so. Mm. It is just like a gold with some dust on it. We need to polish this dust, polish the gold and remove the dust and everything will go back to the original setup. If we start uh, online university, first of all, those people in Egypt who are looking for education like you have seen with the Open University and those who already earned their bachelor degree and would like to continue master and doctorate, mm. they will find the easiest and the best way because all of them are return adults. All of them that are working, mm. they cannot afford to go to university. And Egypt will lead the entire African market and the Middle East because we have in entire Africa, there is one open university in South Africa. But with Egypt and also the standard of living, a lot of other things, you will attract a lot of students to study in Egypt. Then we will be one of the leaders in the entire region. And this, of course, is something we have to look for it. On the other hand, 
to try to assist in improving the quality of higher education in Egypt. I hope, I hope they are willing to allow us to uh, take one of the colleges or one of the universities uh, and adjust it as per the American educational system, which Egypt is adopting now. Egypt is following uh, credit our system, and the credit our system is an American one. They are applying the system, but without a full idea or good idea about what uh, the system has of opportunities for the students. They apply just on an education, which is actually it is not whatever supposed to be to make these systems working. Then we voluntarily, we uh, would love to take one of the colleges or one of the universities and uh, work with them as supposed to be the credit hour system. This will allow a lot of things. First of all, they will accredit Egypt anywhere in the world. Why? Because your level or your educational standard already reach the American standards, which is accredited worldwide. Mm. A, B, we will have also a standard of education which will allow to bring up students who are qualified to be a leaders and the executive in this country. And that's extremely important. Uh, definitely, we need uh, to get into uh, the faculty members. We need to get to the administrators, support staff, and to, uh, to get them to accept the fact that they need uh, to understand the system uh, as supposed to be. Right. Um, you raised a very important point, which is Egypt being a hub or a mecca for uh, uh, education when it comes to neighboring countries, especially inside the African continent. For years, even during the 60s and 50s, the African students, the Gulf students, and even students from uh, East Europe used to come over to the uh, um, uh, colleges and universities, um, in Cairo University, Ain Shams University, over here uh, to Egypt to study different types of uh, subjects, uh, medicine, engineering, uh, uh, even mass com. Mm -hmm. Most of them, even the military uh, science also, uh, people from uh, the Gulf and um, like Africa take their doctorates and uh, PhDs and um, uh, uh, the uh, thesis taken from Egyptian universities and military universities so um, there is nothing new about it but the new what you're talking about now uh, concerning that particular point is upgrading and modernizing and adding uh, to this particular system what is new uh, that is being taken in order to invest in that particular uh, system or that particular sector in Egypt especially that Lots of people from neighboring countries are coming over to study here in Egypt. Let's turn it into an investment. How are we going to be able to do that? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, online education, it is not just born yesterday. It's 134 years old. Mm. And of course, start with uh, correspondence by mail and then develop till the technology came to become online. Mm. There is one Example, I, I, ex, I experienced it myself, I saw it. There are a, a large number of students from Kuwait that are working adults. They used to come to one of the universities here. This university, or actually uh, uh, colleges, they used, they used to accommodate them, bring them only 21 days per semester. They come and take a crash course, and they take the exam and go back. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they are working there. Now, of course, this of course didn't suit the the situation, and the Kuwaiti government they blocked this program. They said no, not anymore. But my point is, if you get this number of students, 
and the Kuwait has a good university, not, not any university, a good university. If they are coming to Egypt and they cannot afford to spend more than a month, then if you bring uh, an online education, mm. they will Definitely. line up from Kuwait till Cairo, try to get in. Mm. This one country. And you can imagine other countries. Every foreigner living in the Gulf and would like to continue their education, they don't have a choice because the, uh, the local universities do not allow foreigners to join. You cannot get in there. Mm -hmm. Only the citizen of the country. So you can attract all these people. Otherwise, a lot of other universities will attract them overseas, will take, you know, will take them there right away without any hesitation. There is a rank for universities in the world, as you know. As far as I know, just only uh, Cairo University just came in recently between 400 and 500 group of 400 and 500 best universities in the world. The Cairo University, without mentioning other names, other countries, which I feel bad even to bring them up, they have three, they have 17 universities in total in that little tiny country. And unfortunately, three of them are top, are top 200 in the world. Mm. Saudi Arabia has two universities, top 500 in the world. Mm. So where we are and why we cannot develop ourselves, we have to, we have to put our hands together, listen to each other, and try to promote. There is nothing wrong if you can listen to me and I listen to you. But let us develop the education in this country. The country is beautiful. It is promising. It is really the time. You have a president, God bless him. He is into education, totally into education. By the way, <coughs> the decision he took in promoting and bringing the education to a higher level, this is one of the most daily and the strong decision any president can take. And another thing, don't ever think developing an education in Egypt, the result will show up tomorrow or in a year. It will take time. This also to tell you something else, that President Sisi is not looking for a very fast political accomplishments. Otherwise, he can do something which can show tomorrow and say, okay, here I, am, here I am. But this will be for long. However, whatever he is doing, the entire world will remember it for him, and the Egypt will recognize the great step he took in order to promote education in Egypt. Mm. It's really a great one. <clears throat> Hopefully, we can do something because, um, honestly, I don't see any thing mm. can make us less than any other good countries who has a strong university. Especially that we used to take a leading role. And uh, by the way, we are still, mm. still indirectly, we are leading also. Of course. Yes. When it comes also to scientific research, look yes. at Dr. Farouk El Baz and Dr. Uh, Dr. Zawil, uh, late Dr. Zawil and uh, yeah, a lot of people. Dr. Sayed and uh, I mean, okay, let me you, ask you we something. can keep don't you mentioning think, many names. Don't you think it is really shame that we have a lot of scientists and we got a lot of a lot of us got awards overseas and we serve and we succeed in America and we cannot afford to give our knowledge to Egypt. Mm. Don't you think it's shame? So bad. Yeah, too bad, really. You know, we would love why, why we have to do something for another country. Why we don't f do it for our country? This is our, this is my dream, at mm. least. You know, my dream is to do something, and I feel really 
we are uh, to feel proud, you know, I'm very proud. But observing the situation, we could see, according to the directives of the Egyptian administration, and on top of it, of course, Dr. Uh, <coughs> President Abdel Fattah <coughs> Sisi, the venues are wide open for uh, kids and uh, youth to, of course, in, during the youth uh, conferences and uh, the World Youth Forum, for integration, for competition, for exploring ideas, for reflecting the scientific researches, for talking about their aspirations and reflecting themselves. I mean, there's a lot of empowerment and enforcement for youth and uh, the new generation to be able to express themselves and what they think about and their aspirations. I mean, things have changed. Well, I tell you one thing, I hope, I hope, in fact, I'm, I'm uh, really grateful to Minister Ambassador uh, Nabila Makram. Mm. She is taking me by hand, as she did with the others before, uh, knocking door from one minister to another, uh, to open doors for our projects, because it's a volunteer, by the way. We are not charging anything. A, B, we have uh, a lot of uh, what you call scholarship with us. We, br we brought it, that Egypt doesn't uh, occur any uh, fund or any mm. expense in developing any system. Mm. Uh, is the thing actually which um, I, I don't feel very happy that the Ministry of Higher Education and the uh, Supreme Council of Universities, even though they canceled this, whatever they call an uh, open university program, the, instead of going through what's supposed to be the steps, the right steps for online, they are trying to develop another program. I mean, why you have to try? And it may work, it may not. You have something, every, every notable university in the world, they already uh, carry it, which online. From Harvard, the top universities, they have it online. It means that there is something right about online. Mm. education, why not to go for it? Why you have to develop something? Why do you have to, to take a risk for developing something? And you get the students, those students, what they are going to do after you close down the program again? I would like them to hear this. I would like really to think of it. Mm. Why not? You have a scholarship to start this project. You have everything. You don't need anything more than a building like what they have now for the Open University. And from this one, you can work all over, all over Africa and the Middle East. By the way, I have visited, uh, you know, through uh, Egypt, the can. We went, we saw a few projects, you know, like uh, South Sinai, the investment uh, zone, and El Alamein, uh, the new capital, and El Galala mountain. Honestly, I mean, we heard of all of them, but what we have seen is plenty, is 100 times more than what we could imagine. Of course. It is something unbelievable. Mm. You know, I always say I would love to see that magic stick which President Sisi is holding. He go through and everything. Uh, God bless him. I, I don't want, you know, God bless him. He has the mind as such. And uh, on top uh, of all, he has the sense and the spirit of <coughs> executing projects with strength and pre um, precision so that they could be taken in a very short time. And he is very well, uh, he's been, be, became I mean, very God popular bless, with that. I, cannot, I mean, Egypt became very nobody, popular. Nobody, nobody can believe the amount of work is done and the accuracy of work. And as an educator, I went to, I insisted actually to go and see uh, Al Galala University. Mm. They have, uh, they build a, 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 a university to accommodate 14 colleges. Uh, honestly, America doesn't have uh, the space. They have a very luxury. They are very generous. In the, maybe it's too much, but believe me, America doesn't have such a space for uh, education there. It's, it's far less than this one. Now, what does it need? It needs the right programs. 
the of right course. education. Mm -hmm. you know, the right content. Exactly. You need to design it right. I mean, it, it doesn't work the way they think or they are planning. It works differently. And I recommend now, uh, of course, President Sisi would like to bring uh, a branch campus for uh, notable universities. Of course, I was going to talk about the campus. I okay. mean, Galala is a brilliant idea. But how are those students going to uh, be, uh, I mean, the means of transportation if they're living midtown or they're living on um, in, uh, other uh, very far areas from Al Galala? Of course, Al Galala is. If the location in its own right, of course, it's a new um, uh, location for um, um, Egyptian citizens, and it would take hours uh, to reach it. They so do have a huge two hostels, one for girls, one for boys. Hmm. Then any students will get a chance to live there. and uh, Just like uh, foreign countries, I mean, yes. you get a sitting campus. In addition, they have campus. plenty of apartments, they have plenty of villas. It's uh, don't worry about accommodation, don't worry. In fact, I don't mind to go with, with the atmosphere there. I don't mind to go from Cairo to have dinner there and come back. Mm. It is a beautiful one. But what I recommend, uh, instead of bringing a branch campus, a branch campus will not lift up the Egyptian education standard, but it will work for themselves because there is no competition. The best way to do it is affiliation. When you get a university from overseas to be affiliated with an Egyptian university. This way will force the Egyptian university to reach the academic uh, accreditation uh, standards for that university. Then you already you will bring up that university. A, B, tuition. There are two important systems in America, which is very good. I always use them when I, you know, as, an, uh, as a consultant, I affiliate universities together. They do have something called 2 plus 2 and the 3 plus 1. What is that? Okay. In, in America, the educational system it is different than here. There, the university has half of the curriculum, half of the courses belong to the university. It means every student in this university, either for in medicine or art or whatever, has to take these courses. Mm -hmm. And the other half is for the college, for the major. Mm, major yeah. or minor? Mm. Yeah, it is, but it's not actually minor. It is something uh, to open mind the students. Mm. Like uh, if you are, for example, you studied mass comm. Mm. Okay, mass comm, you have to take a course, you have to take a course in art, mm. course in political science, course in business, then you will have an idea. How many subjects I'm supposed to take? The, uh, you see, this is another issue. The entire degree in America is 120 to 128 sub, uh, credit hours. It means uh, 40 to 42 courses, mm. average, because if we consider the course is three credits. In Egypt, they do have the, the degree 144. Let us talk about this one. America, when they decided for 120, they did bring a psychologist and the educators, top educators, top psychologists. And they studied students. They found that an average student cannot carry more than 12 credit per semester, which actually four courses. Mm. The students which consider very good can carry 15. And the students who is excellent, they give him 18. Based on 144 credits here in Egypt, they consider every student as an excellent student. Mm. The student is victim in this case. Why? Because he cannot, he cannot, a lot take, of pressure. He cannot take this load. Hmm. Then how? A. B. If you, as an uh, Egyptian government, accept the American degree, which has 120 credits, why you don't bring down your credits to 120? Hmm. At least, you know, I'm not saying to be equal, 
but uh, I mean to to give the chance to students to uh, to be uh, like the other ones, the American ones, not to suffer more in order to graduate. One other thing, there is no intensive for the students here. I mean, the system is called credit hour. Credit hour it means number of hours. If you complete them, successfully complete them, you graduate. So, in, in America, you're supposed to take 12 in fall, 12 in spring, that's 24, and the six in summer, it makes 30. In four years, make 120, okay, you graduate now. Mm. If you are a good student, you can, you can finish in three and a half years. Mm. And if you are an excellent student, you finish in three years. If you do it in Egypt, they are not going to allow you, they don't allow you to graduate. They tell you, okay, you stay home till your colleague will finish the four years and come and graduate with them. Mm, what is the intensive? Mm. Then why students has to work hard? Why? Mm. You see, these small things, maybe they think it's simple. It is not. It's a very important, extremely mm. important for everything. And to start with, I would like them to consider, really, I would like them to consider very well number of credits because in america by the way the credit our system the american system has been adopted by the entire world even europe adopting this one because it has been proven and unesco said the best education is the higher education in america so you have this system why you don't have to follow it and you apply it. did you suggest give your suggestions did you negotiate that with the um, officials in the Ministry of Education, uh, those who are in charge of uh, the uh, educational system in the higher education, have you taken further I, serious steps? I don't think they want to hear it. I did, by the way, I did approach them. I don't, I'm not going, this is not the place to, uh, to go right. through what happened, mm. but, uh, but I am but disappointed, disappointed, not once, twice. Uh, and uh, honestly, honestly, I'm not going to give up. I will never give up this country. Yeah, my because country. to my knowledge, you are an, an Egyptian, not only an Egyptian citizen, though that you are an uh, Am Egyptian American citizen, but you are an Egyptian citizen. I've personally known you for a long time with a huge passion for Egypt. Of course, of course, it's my. I, I, I've, I've had the pleasure to meet you while <coughs> I was in the United States, while I was uh, seeking was to study pleasure. in college, and I've seen you as a yes. professor a very popular Egyptian professor that uh, in, uh, lots of American and non-American students uh, were um, uh, interested in attending your uh, sessions and uh, I'm fully aware of what I'm saying and you have a passion uh, for Egypt. And, and yeah, I'm not going to give up. Mm. You know, right, but, but then we, we need to know uh, the, the challenges. Uh, if we are overcoming, we can see that we are coming with citizens like you, you're, uh, we're overcoming the challenges, but there are models for, ed for education, successful models and a success story that Egypt might take a look at, like, for example, f uh, Finland. Uh, they have come a long way when it comes to education. Sweden, Finland, a lot of other countries, right. yes. Can these experiences be fit in Egypt? If they want. Hmm. See, this is the problem. If they are open and ready to, uh, to accept this idea. You know, uh, I hear a lot of strange answers uh, from uh, officials. I mean strange because I cannot believe they don't know this information. I mean, hmm. a very, uh, very simple information in the system and you don't know it. Uh, still, I'm going to say, thank God we are a beautiful country, has a beautiful people, has a beautiful educator. Everything is very good in the educational system. Mm -hmm. However, need to be polished. Mm -hmm. Need to be polished the right way. And there is nothing wrong if I know something and I will offer it to you. But before we, have, we I mean, we're running out of time, we only have like, three minutes to, uh, to go, we need to talk about the facilitations and the uh, amount of enforcement uh, you know, and empowerment that is given by the head of state president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, through the many conferences that are only targeting youth and the new generation, empowering them to 
uh, enforce their country, to work for their country. And in planting th this particular spirit of uh, belonging and the love for education and scientific research for the sake, the best interest of uh, our country. Well, I tell you one thing. If not for the President Sisi, I would have never had the hope to go strongly for three years planning for program. And honestly, I, now I have only God and the President Sisi to uh, allow whatever we would love to do for improving this country. I did send it to him. I did send him the project, actually hand, hand handle it mm. when, we were, uh, when we were with him last Tuesday, and I hope it will get to him. But I don't want him, I hope also, that you can give me a few minutes to listen to me in presence of Minister of Higher Education. Mm. I would love, of course, or any officials, mm. but I would love him to really address it not to send it to the Minister of Higher Education, mm. honestly. B not because of anything, but he has a sincere hope. This President Sisi is, is something, honestly, something God bless him. Mm. God give him the kindness, give him the wisdom, give him the knowledge. He has the real intention to uh, stretch out his hands to everybody Everything. who has a new idea. No, I'm, I'm telling you, but then I would love and really sincerely, I would love that he can allow, I know that he doesn't have any time, but he will give me a few minutes to uh, uh, tell President Sisi what actually we can do to improve the educational system in Egypt and what we did in order to get support from foreign countries, the notable universities, to support here. And you and have the experience. Uh, you well, have been a professor well, in the United you know, States and in, uh, in Brooklyn University. Actually, I mean, actually, I'm, a, I'm a, as you can see, I'm a consultant for six countries: mm. China, Malaysia, Jordan, Egypt, Morocco, and America. Mm. Excellent. Uh, you know, if I mean, at least you know, uh, this to tell you that I uh, I have some knowledge. I can of do something. Of course, you have you all know? the knowledge, <laughs> no. and and uh, uh, <coughs> it is our right as Egyptians to benefit from. Uh, someone like you, uh, and a professor and a scientist like you, uh, to be able to uh, get this experience and acquire this knowledge from you as generations and generations. You see, it's a, the situation is, President Sis, of course, doesn't have a minute. The normally, is a normal process. When it goes to his office, they will send it to the Minister of Higher Education to mm. look into this stuff. I did go and, and work with the Minister of Higher Education and I'm telling President Sisi, please, I know And that from where we stand over here, and we know that there are many <coughs> people out there watching us uh, right now from Windows and Current Affairs, we are extending our call to His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Uh, there is an Egyptian, cit Egyptian American citizen who has great passion for Egypt and uh, um, education in Egypt, and he's longing to be able to have only two minutes from Your Excellency's uh, time uh, to be able to uh, present his ideas to you for the best interest of Egypt. Yes, I hope so. I'm really crossing my finger and praying day and the night. Not because of anything, but I would love to be even 0.01% support mm. of President Caesar's work because he's doing a marvelous work, great work. You will never believe it. You never, you know, I'm, I'm telling everyone of those who really uh, just uh, being a negative. If you don't believe it, come and see it. You will never believe what's going mm. on. It's really God bless him. God bless him. And uh, from uh, where we stand here, we're very hopeful uh, that the Egyptian administration will have uh, 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 their ears and their arms and their hearts open to us and to your call and uh, give you some of their minutes uh, to be so. able to meet you and listen to your uh, really uh, inspiring so. ideas. I am not going to give up. I'm not going Hopefully, to give up. Inshallah. No way. No way. Inshallah. On this very optimistic note, Professor Mahmoud Azmi, you are an international higher education consultant. You're also a president of Egyptian American Federation. Thank you very much, as usual. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the time. It's a pleasure. Okay. Always a pleasure, actually, to be with the Nile uh, TV here. Thank you so much. Very, it's very nice. a real thank pleasure you. to us having you today. And I guess this brings us to the end of this edition of Windows and Current Affairs. Many thanks to all of you. And until we see you again next week, that's a goodbye.